Hey, what's up guys? So I've been working on an IoT project for a while now where I'm basically trying to control and monitor everything in my house, which includes when the smoke detectors go off. So obviously I wasn't going to hack into my existing smoke detectors. Uh, that would be a really bad idea. Uh, instead, I went out and picked up a whole bunch of these cheap smoke detectors, tore into them, and the plan was to get into this alarm circuit where I could monitor it and put a Wi-Fi module in there to get the push notification out to my smartphone uh, when the detector goes off. And I also picked up some of these uh, water leak alarms too, so just in case the flood or the basement floods, I get that push notification immediately. So I started down that path, but then I realized that maybe a better way of doing this is to listen for when the smoke detectors go off, which is where I came up with uh, this circuit here, which is a very simple microphone circuit. So we've got the microphone through an audio amplifier into a comparator where we could set the thresholds uh, and then read it in as a straight up digital input. So a uh, very simple, easy circuit to work with. And uh, here's the schematic, but first let me give you a quick uh, demo and show you how this thing works. So I've got a little Arduino board there that is uh, monitoring that digital pin. And if it goes high, just serial.print loud noise here. So uh, let me, I'm gonna go ahead and trigger it. Don't worry, I'm gonna mute the volume so uh, you, it won't come out on the video and uh, hurt your ears or anything. So here we go. Okay, so as soon as it heard that loud noise, there you have it, it could print it out and uh, it's continuing to print that because I've got sort of a peak detector circuit on there that holds it high once it detects it. So um, let's jump right into the schematic now. So really not too, uh, anything too complex here. We've got the microphone over here. Uh, this is pulled right out of my junk bin, so I'm not really sure what the specs are on it. I kind of experimented with some different values here, but I landed on two 10K ohm pull-ups there to 3.3 volts, and that seemed to bias the microphone pretty good. So I've got that through a 0.1 microfarad capacitor into a trim pot to kind of trim out the sensitivity of the microphone into the very common LM386 here, uh, which you might have uh, seen in some of my other videos, like the whistle detect project, where I was turning appliances on in my house by whistling, going, kind of thing. And uh, say, I think I might have actually used this same exact circuit uh, for that project. So if I can dig up that old video, I'll put it in the description below. So very basic setup here. We're gaining it up with the 10 microfarad capacitor. And then the output feeds a high pass filter right here set with a corner frequency of about 3.18 kilohertz. Um, I did take this uh, smoke detector and look at the output frequency or that audio frequency just by hooking the scope up right here. And sure enough, it's like around 3.3 or so kilohertz. So the corner frequency of 3.18 kilohertz is fine for that. Just to kind of filter out all of that lower frequency audio background noise and stuff. Okay, and I could have actually bandpass filtered this, but this actually seems to work pretty good. I did have this circuit just on my bench uh, for a few days, background noise, watching movies, all kinds of stuff, and it never triggered falsely, so that's pretty good. But it can pick up a smoke detector going off in the other room, so it is sensitive, sensitive enough to hear that. Now, right now, I'm kind of like close to the microphone. I'm talking loudly, so no doubt I'm triggering it, but uh, and that can be tuned out, as you, you will see with, uh, uh, well, we'll look at the circuit with the scope and stuff in a second here. So anyway, that high pass filter feeds into a comparator circuit using the MCP6242 op amp. So you get two in a package, the one unused is just hooked up there, positive pin uh, going to ground there, the negative feeding back, or the output feeding back to the negative input. And um, we've got a trim pot uh, right over here so we can set the threshold for where we drive this output. So this audio input right here is gonna be sort of all over the place. Let me see if I can grab a scrap piece of paper here and show you what that looks like. So we've got the threshold set like that. That's a DC signal right 
here on this pin. So whenever this pin, the positive input, goes higher than this pin, we get a positive voltage out. The 3.3 volts goes high. So the audio might look like this coming in, and then as soon as it starts crossing over that threshold, the output will actually mimic that as well, okay? And I don't want this to feed into the microcontroller, so that output feeds through a shocky diode, uh, again, another part just out of my junk bin, into a 100 microfarad capacitor, a big giant capacitor, uh, so it's basically charging that up. So this giant thing here is going to slowly charge up this capacitor, and I've got a 100k ohm resistor right across that to bleed that off and also uh, make it not so sensitive. So this capacitor slowly charges up with that high frequency smoke detector alarm output. And uh, again, we will scope all of this out and I'll show you kind of how it all works. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I've got the circuit totally probed out here. And uh, you can see sort of as I'm talking here, you see the yellow trace uh, is showing you that raw audio output. And that yellow trace there is hooked up right here after the high pass filter. So this is what's feeding into the comparator op amp. The blue trace is the reference voltage feeding uh, the, the uh, comparator circuit. So when the uh, input, the yellow trace there, is above the blue trace, our output goes high and then it will start charging up the output. Uh, and that's what I have the purple trace hooked up to right across the 100 microfarad capacitor. Uh, so if we sort of start talking loudly, you can see actually, actually let me slow it down a little bit so we can see more. Okay, so now if I start talking, you can s actually I'll get the, uh, there we go. So as soon as I beeped the alarm, you could immediately see where it charged up that output, uh, that output capacitor. And then of course, over at uh, the Arduino side, we saw that as a high, a digital input read high. So we could output the loud noise. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned it in this video or not, but um, the reason I'm doing it this way is so that I don't need to rely on counters or timers or anything like that. Uh, in other projects, what I would have done is actually read in that raw frequency out of the comparator, which would be at the frequency of the uh, the alarm. So I could read in that 3.3 kilohertz signal and decode it basically as the uh, smoke alarm. So um, I'm not doing that here because I plan on using a Wi-Fi module uh, to read this in that may not have those uh, timers or counters. So I just want a simple digital input for that. And uh, it works great. So again, I'm gonna just show you here on the scope. Um, And then I'm just going to stop that so you can see right there is when we started charging up that output capacitor. The because it does like a three beep and then it holds off another three beeps. We actually in between here, we're starting to discharge that 100 microfarad capacitor. So again, that's kind of the balance there between the size of that capacitor and the, bleed, the bleeding uh, resistor, the bleeder resistor. Uh, I've got a cross there. So it's a balance of between those two. Now, next steps uh, will be to actually implement this into a small board um, and hook it up to the, uh, the, the bigger uh, Wi-Fi or IoT project that I've been working on. So uh, again, you know, we, we've got some other things in here we can tweak with, including the trim pot for the microphone sensitivity, as well as the trim pot here, which you can see as I tweak it, this is changing the reference voltage for the comparator. So I can make this much more sensitive. So I'm bringing it down and you can see as I talk, the purple trace increases, decreases, and uh, it is sensitive to frequency because we have this high pass filter here with a cutoff frequency of about 3.18 kilohertz. And uh, 
that was uh, sort of just, you know, that wasn't uh, anything I really designed to necessarily. I wanted something around three kilohertz, but more importantly, I was just using uh, components that I had laying around. So uh, I've got a ton of 0.1 microfarad capacitors and a ton of 1K resistors. So I'm just gonna show you one other thing real quick here. So I found this app here, it's called, uh, I don't know what it's called actually, Sonic something, but it uh, generates a frequency output, which is nice for sort of tuning out these circuits. Um, and I was able to, to kind of find a good sensitivity here by actually setting this to around 3.3 .3 kilohertz or so. Um, and that's probably pretty annoying. So I could find that sort of that that good threshold there of sensitivity on the microphone and comparator trip level. Uh, so anyway, kind of a cool little circuit there. Uh, you will probably see this, like I mentioned, in future videos uh, with uh, the IoT project called, of course, the Pusher Project. So uh, anyway, there you have it. Thanks for watching.